kidney stutter. My last video focused on the symmetry of the notes in a diatonic key, most importantly the key of C, on the guitar fretboard within the four top strings, from the D to the G to the B to the high E string. The third rail is the term I use to describe what goes on between the G string and the B string. And placing that at the center of the symmetrical pattern of notes on the guitar fretboard. Or I shouldn't say the symmetrical pattern, I should say a symmetrical pattern, because there is in fact more than one symmetry on the guitar fretboard. And the upper symmetry or the third rail symmetry, which consists of those four top strings, does not continue as such below from the D string to the A string to the E string, simply because in order to establish symmetry, we need to find the center and then go equally distant from the center in opposite directions. And you cannot go equally distant from the third rail beyond the D string, simply because we only have one string higher in pitch than the third rail itself. If we consider the third rail, the G and the B string, the high E string is the limit to how far you can go in that direction, and the D string is the limit to how far you can go in that direction while still maintaining that understanding of the symmetry. But symmetry is all over the place. There are multiple symmetries. And so what I like to call the lower symmetry, the symmetry below or including the D string, and then below, so D, A, and E, those three low strings form their own symmetry. And there, in fact, is an additional level to the symmetry of the fretboard, but we can take it as groupings. So we have string groupings. We have the four top strings centered around the third rail, and we have the three bottom strings centered around the A string. The fifth string becomes the center of that three string symmetry. Since the major scale is, after all, major, you might think that the entire diatonic system is built around the major scale and that the major scale explains everything and that everything must be compared to the major scale when you're studying chords and modes and things like that. But the symmetry of the diatonic system is in fact not based on the major scale. Think of the major scale as the entryway to the system but not the underlying structure of the system. So the entryway is where we find the directory, or sort of like the table of contents in a book. It leads you to other things, but the underlying symmetry is something a little bit different. You actually have to start on the second note of the major scale to see it. In the key of C, that note is D. And if we look at the piano keyboard, it becomes very clear why D, or the second key degree, is actually the center of the system. And the Dorian mode becomes the most symmetrical mode of all seven modes. The relationship of the Dorian mode to the Ionian mode, which is the major scale, and then to extend beyond that all the other modes. You can see that very clearly on the piano keyboard. The piano keyboard is an expression of the diatonic system in its most linear, direct form. There is no instrument that does a better job of illustrating the structure of the diatonic system than the piano. The piano keyboard gives us a picture of the diatonic system in the key of C. Or, I should say in the blank key signature. The key of C, of course, is a shorthand for C major, but it's also shorthand for the key signature that has no sharps or flats. And I want to address this idea of what key signatures even mean, because if we take the fact that there are no sharps or flats to indicate that we are in C major, well, we're not being fair to a minor to the key of A minor. If we take the idea that there is one sharp, F sharp, which replaces F in the key of G, 
we are then not being fair to the minor key, the relative minor of G, which has the same notes but begins and ends on E. So every major key has a relative minor key that shares the key signature. And so the key signature itself does not tell you whether you're in a major key or a minor key. That becomes evident from the music. That becomes evident from the structure of the music. Likewise, if the piece of music is set in a particular mode uh, that does not begin and end on any of the notes of or any of the tonics of the minor or major, say Dorian mode or Mixolydian mode, they will still share the key signature of their relative major key. So we can think of the major key as a starting point, as a way in to the system, but not as the essence of the structure of the system. And for that, we have to look at simply the distribution of intervals, the proportional distribution of intervals, regardless of what mode you are thinking about, regardless of what piece of music you're playing in, whatever style you're playing it in. If you are thinking about a diatonic key, the keys that we get our one, four, five patterns from, the keys that we are looking at when we consider the circle of fifths. So no, it's not all about the major scale. The major scale is important, but it's not all about the major scale. You open the book and the first thing you see at the beginning of the book is the table of contents that tells you, it directs you to where you're going to go in the book. It shows you what else is there. The key of C is the directory. It's the table of contents. It tells you how the systems are structured, how the other keys are structured. But the overall system is all the keys. The overall system is all the keys, all the major keys, all the minor keys, every mode and every key. That's the system. And that system depends on fixed intervals, specific intervals, a specific distance from each other, whole steps and half steps that make up each key and ultimately combine into this chromatic um, matrix that we call the diatonic system. But each diatonic key is based on intervals. Three whole steps, a half step. Two whole steps, a half step. Three whole steps, half step. Two whole steps, half step. Start anywhere, end anywhere. Those three whole steps will always be followed by a half step, which will be followed by two whole steps, which will be followed by a half step in either direction. How does that fit on the guitar fretboard? What does that look like when you just approach it in a neutral way, in an objective way and say, I'm not concerned about scales. I'm not concerned about chords. All I care about is where the notes are relative to each other in an absolute sense, regardless of what I play. That's what this is about. This thing that we, that we have, that we use all the time, and we're always talking about it and we're always comparing one thing to another within the structure of the diatonic system. This is why when you play a pentatonic scale, this is note number one. This is not note number two. This is a third. Let's say we play um, A minor pentatonic. A is one. C is not two. C is three. C is flat three, minor three. If A is one and C is minor three, why? Why is C minor three? D is four. E is five. G is not six, G is seven, flat seven, and A is one. Why those numbers? Because we're referring to the diatonic numbering system. We're referring to the numbering system that is based on the, yes, based on the major mode. The major mode is the starting point. It is the reference point, but it is not the system itself. It's a layer of the system. So that's what we want to think about. Um, the next video is going to focus on those lower three strings. The previous video focused on the upper four strings, D, G, B, high E. And the next video will be focusing on the three low strings, D, A, and E. And uh, that's a work in progress. So uh, you will be seeing more about that soon. All right. Thank you for subscribing. Please, if you haven't yet, please do like and subscribe, all that stuff. See you soon.